Hello, good day, and welcome. Today, we're making waffles. That's all there's to it. We're gonna make some waffles today. Because it is the Captain Total Waffle 1000 subscriber waffle cooking show. There are various recipes that we could be diving into when it comes to representing the waffle on the world stage, but today we're going with a traditional Nordic version of the waffle, though with a secret ingredient. First of all, we are going to need some eggs. I'll be using eight for today's recipe. Butter, maybe around 100, 120 grams, depends on exactly how sticky your waffle iron is. And then some vanilla for this particular one, for some nice depth of flavor. Uh, some baking soda for textural purposes, not well in focus there, but that's okay. And some milk for our main liquid. Could also use water, but milk has a lovely flavor. And then we have flour. Almost any type of flour will do. Then we need some sugar. I am using some cane sugar here today. And now I unveil the secret ingredient to you all. It is psyllium husk. Now, it is basically there to do a little bit of texture work. Make it a bit lighter, a little bit crunchier. It is not obligatory. It is essentially a fibrous husk of a plant called psyllium. There you go. Eggs. Eight of them. We're essentially going to be cracking these ones open, and we're going to separate them into whites and yolks. The important thing here is that we need the whites completely clean. We want nothing else in them except the whites. The yolks, well, if a bit of white goes in there, it's okay. The most important thing is that we separate the yolks into the bigger of the two bowls, because that is where we are going to be doing the mixing of the batter itself. And for that, we're going to need a lot more space. The smaller bowl will be perfect for whisking the whites later on. And this is where we grab our big bowl with yolks and we add all the little things that we want distributed evenly across the entire batter. Stuff with flavor, to do with texture, all that. So, the psyllium husk. In it goes. My tendency is to eyeball everything, but I also can say that I tend to use about a teaspoon's worth. Of course, you can also leave this one out, but I do find that it does a nice thing. You might need to add a little bit extra water to uh, sort of get the full advantages of using it though. Then, vanilla in whatever form you can find it. Similar amount. We have the baking soda, and we will also be adding the sugar at this particular stage. So, in it comes. Exactly how much sugar to add at this stage of the process is really up to your own discretion in many, many ways. But um, I would be adding maybe six teaspoons. Ah, you know what, let's go for another one. We're gonna add the number seven, just because we can. And uh, I'm feeling feisty today. This will make the dish slightly sweeter and also make the texture a little bit more wholesome and a bit less bready, uh, which will be very lovely indeed. Don't we grab a spoon? The aim of the game here is simply to mix things together so they get, uh, um, well, nice and congealed. Then once that is achieved, roughly, we're going to just leave it aside for a minute while we do the butter. Because the butter can't go in in its rigid form, wouldn't work. So we're instead going to grab the bit that was left over from the last thing we cooked and then we're just gonna add a little bit extra we're aiming for around a hundred grams for about three liters of waffle batter i put the butter in so that we won't have to butter up or oil up the waffle iron during the cooking process so into the batter it will go and as such we will want it liquid that's what this little pot is going to be doing and now since i have uh, chosen aesthetics over anything else for the shooting of this little video, I went with a very small pot that uh, got some butter over the sides, but of course, I mean, a bigger one can do as well. But once the butter is mostly melted off, then we can simply just leave it to slowly melt away the last bit, so that it will all be liquid and ready for use. But it'll need to cool a little bit. Back to the batter though. We now have to add a little bit of water and a little bit of flour because when we add that butter, 
it will be warm. And since we don't want it to cook the egg yolks in there, we're gonna add a little bit more substance while the butter cools and those two factors combined will then enable us to add the butter without causing any major issues uh, in the batter. I, uh, yeah. There have been stories of uh, people who managed to cook their egg yolks for this, and it's just not, uh, it's not, not worth doing. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna mix that up. Get it nice and even. Uh, the name of the game is to have butter everywhere. In the batter, at least. And then once that is done, we can move on to the general mixing stage, where we essentially get the batter beefed up with milk and flour. What we're going to do is just pour one in after the other, mix it in, pour in milk, mix it in. We're going to be doing this a number of times. Now, if you have a fancy pansy machine that can do all the mixing while you are doing all the pouring in of various bits and bobs, then absolutely don't hesitate to use it. I suppose I'm just a, you know, a glutton for punishment and manual labor. So here I am mixing it all in by hand just to show you, you know, that could be done too. So at the end of it all, we will have dumped in the entire litre of milk and the job of the flour is to be gradually mixed in to achieve the desired texture. This will be about the time when the batter has reached a porridge-like texture. We don't want it as fluid as like pancake batter. We have some egg whites coming in that will make the batter a bit more fluid and fluffy than before. Now it's time to pull up your favorite YouTube video in the background and set aside some time for whisking. At least if you're doing it with a manually cranked one such as mine. There'll be quite a lot of whisking to do, so I suggest you get comfortable. So after all that, we will have a texture that is remarkably solid for what was once a liquid. Well, not solid, but definitely foamy and contiguous so that we can essentially dump it all just as if it was one big pile of foam. Which it is at this point. And then we begin the folding process. We are going to be doing this with a flat implement. And the name of the game here is just to fold the dough gradually, gradually, gradually over the egg whites. This egg foam is then going to be gradually worked into the batter. And this is going to go on for a little bit. Eventually, it's going to start paying off. Um, little breaks can be taken from this or that, who knows. But really, the most important thing at this stage is that we end up with a largely even batter and have faith it will come and now the batter is for all intents and purposes finished so what we're gonna do is just get as much of it down into the blob as possible and then we're gonna leave this in the fridge. I always tend to leave this batter in the fridge overnight or at least for a couple of hours so that the whole thing can come together really nicely and form one contiguous blob of beautiful waffle batter for whatever cooking purposes you desire. Well, or at least the ones that involve a slightly sweet breakfast. And with this recipe, there is actually no need to butter up the waffle iron in any way. All you need to do is get it in there, get it sort of even, and close the lid, and let it do its thing. It's gonna raise itself and lower itself, depending on the contractions of the batter itself. And then, at one point, you will find that it has browned. And that is the time when we pull our waffles out of the waffle iron again. Don't necessarily do like this klutz and just use your fingers like a glutton for self-administered punishment. No, instead, you can use a wooden implement or something. I tend to find that a chopstick is really, really good for pulling it out. But in any case, regardless of how you do it, this is your waffle. And thank you for watching the Total Waffle Cooking Show. 
there are food waffles, there are vegan waffles, there are cheese waffles, vegetable waffles, all sorts of recipes that we can get into as the channel hits new milestones. I hope you've enjoyed this Captain Total Waffle subscriber celebration waffle cooking show. Be kind to yourself, be good to others, and I will see you soon.